example 187. Use the data below with the Wilcoxon rank sum test and a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the median BMI of men is greater than the median BMI of women. Okay, so they have the BMI measurements for men and women, and they've been nice enough to give us the ranks included with the data. They tell us what the sample size is for each column, and they tell us the rank total or the rank sum for each column as well. So this has been nicely laid out for us. One thing we want to notice here is the sample sizes are too large to use our standard table for the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Our table there has a maximum sample size of 10 for both samples, so you can't exceed 10 and 10. So 13 and 12 are both too big, so at this point we're going to have to rely on the idea of using uh, the standard uh, kind of normal distribution as an approximation to the distribution for this test statistic. So what we're going to do here is we're essentially going to use a Z test statistic, a large sample method to solve the problem. All right, so let's start with the claim though. We'll still use the same kind of structure as we used in the last problem. If you look at the notes, we have it expressed in terms of distribution, but I would like to um, do what the problem uses here, which is just the median. It's just simpler to write out. So let's say the median for men Right, is greater than the median for women. Okay, so we write that out. Then we'll have HO and HA. And when you look at the claim here, you see the greater than symbol, that indicates it's HA, right? And then for the HO, of course, it would be the opposite idea. So we'll say less than or equal to. Okay, so we have claim HOHA. Now we'd normally rank the data and come up with the sample sizes and all that, but that's been done for us, so we don't have to do that. That's nice. And then from there, what I want to do here is just work out the test stat formula then. So the formula is a little complicated. It's the rank total for the first population or first sample, right? And then minus, it's going to have this following expression. So N1 times N1 plus N2 plus 1 divided by two, and this is going to be the mean for this sum of ranks here. And then we're going to have here on the bottom the square root of, and then n1, n2, parentheses, n1 plus n2 plus 1 again, all divided by 12. Okay, so if you put that all together, that'll give you a z test stat, or a test stat with a z distribution. So let's fill that in. The rank total for the first group is 187, right? 187. Minus the sample size for the first group, well, you can see that that's 13, right? So 13, and then it'll be 13 plus 12 plus 1. Now, 13 plus 12, if you look at that, is 25, right? And then 25 plus 1 is 26, so we can just say 26 there to save some space. And that'll be divided by 2. All right, and then from there, we have a fraction bar, and we'll have the square root of, now again, it'll be 13 for N1 times 12 for N2 times 13 plus 12 plus 1, which again is 26. And we'll divide all that by 12. So you can see that these would cancel out. That will go into that 13 times, so we can do the arithmetic in our calculator a little bit faster. All right, let's do it then. Okay, so I'm going to type in the equivalent expression there. It's 187 for the top minus 13 squared, essentially, is what it will become after you simplify a little bit. And you'll end up with 18 on top. So the top part of this fraction is just 18. And then divide by, let's see what the bottom comes out to be. It'll just be the square root of 13 times 26, right? So 13 times 26. And I didn't mean to, I didn't want to do that. I just didn't want to do 13 times 26. So then I'll write it as a square root of 338. Okay, so that's our test stat in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and finally now approximate what that is. So we'll have 18 divided by the square root of 338. Okay, and when we're done with that, we get 0 0.98 if we round it off, right? 0 0.98. Okay, very good. Now that we have that, let's go on to finish the problem by looking at our critical value. You can kind of tell already that this test stat isn't very extreme, so it's not going to end up in any rejection region. But, you know, just to be sure, we're going to do the critical value. So the critical value, you know, we'll draw the bell curve or the Z distribution curve. And we'll use that as a representation of our bell curve. And then we'll look at the type of test we're conducting here. It looks like a right-tailed test, right? 
So we're looking for the test stat to be extreme on the right hand side. We'll have a Z here located in the center, zero. And then we're going to look for this critical value that's located right here. Now that critical value is going to depend upon the alpha significance level. It's 0.05 for this test. So it's going to be all 0.05 in one tail here. Let's go to our chart, look up 0.05 in one tail. We're going to go to our T chart. We're going to look at 0.05 row. We're going to go straight to the bottom to find the critical value located there. Since 0.05 is all in one tail, we'll just be looking at 0.05. Okay, so we're at our T table and we're looking for 0.05 in one tail and we have to go all the way to the bottom where we find the z-score value, so let's do that now. So looking all the way at the bottom, we find the number 1.645. Okay, so we look up 0.05, we got 1.645 as our critical value and clearly you can see that this test stat lands over here. It lands in the white space, so we're going to say that we do not reject HO. So we're going to conclude here that we do not reject HO. Do not reject HO and therefore do not support HA. Do not support HA. Now remember when you look at our claim here, you can see our claim is actually the same as HA. So we're going to say we cannot support the claim. In other words, we cannot say that uh, men have a higher BMI than women. This is in spite of the fact that there is a pretty decent difference between the rank sums. But remember, there's one other man in the group than there is women, you know. And so, you know, you can still say there's still a, a, you know, a moderate difference between men and women here in the rank totals. But, you know, there is a larger sample size, so that contributes a little bit. But the other issue is essentially that, you know, the test also could have issues because it's a weak test. And so remember, weak tests have a harder time rejecting the null hypothesis. But based on this test data, it doesn't seem too extreme. It really looks like these two things cannot be rejected, or in other words, they cannot be shown to be different from one another, so as a result, um, we're kind of siding with HO, which has the equal side as part of it. Okay, so either way, that's the end of the test. That's the basic idea of the large test procedure. Remember, T1 is just the rank total for the first population. Then you fill in all these other values, which are just the sample sizes, essentially, put into these different expressions for the mean and standard deviation. When you're done, you get your test stat. You treat it like a regular z-test from there, looking up your alpha value to the critical value. It's pretty straightforward, pretty similar to what we've done in the past. And that's what you use whenever your sample sizes are over 10 and 10. All right, that's it.